Alrighty, we are live and I actually have somebody here with me. If they will answer. Hang on, I think I have my wrong headset. Do -do 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 -do. How to... could you do this? I know, right? <laughs> I'm the worst. You're usually so prepared. No, I'm not. Not in the least. So completely ready for all things that uh, life throws absolutely. at you. <laughs> Handling all of them in a healthy and positive and productive manner. Okay, who, which one of your mistresses are you describing? Because that ain't me. <laughs> oh, sh wait. Crap. Which one am I talking to? Your wife. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, uh, today's stream has my husband, Johnny Woe, in it. Hello. Why? Because I could. She was bored. I was not. She was bored. I would never. Never be bored. Never. We're drawing androids today. Yes, uh, we are continuing the, the channel. The technical term is cyborg. <laughs> Did you actually know it actually was Cyborg in the, the Japanese Mis dub? Yeah, it was mistranslated. Yeah, how do you do that? Like, they, they translated the rest of the story right. You'd think that at some point someone would have been like, we choose the wrong word. Isn't like, it? You, you feel like it came up in production at some point and they're like, oh, well, we've already recorded all these lines. They're <laughs> Android now. I'm just wondering, like, is like, wouldn't the word Cyborg in Japanese be very similar? Because very often uh, words like that tend to come from English. Also, hi, Bone Havoc. Welcome to my stream. Hi, Bone Havoc. Uh, Cyborg, I believe, was Jinzo Ningen. Mm -hmm. Android in Japanese. What was Android? Android is... Uh, no, they're not remotely they're the same. <laughs> Android is... Android. See? Yeah, not even close. <laughs> I, so, I remember when Dragon Ball was airing, there was another... Like, the first time it was airing. There was another anime on Toonami and like most of the other networks that were carrying the same kind of programming that would be showing Dragon Ball. Mm -hmm. There was an anime called Cyborg 007. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, it was mediocre. Um, I've seen it. <laughs> it was okay. Yeah. Like I, I, I remember enjoying it. It's, it's yeah. not like one of the ones that I always look back on like, yes, that was the best anime. But it, it was all right for its time, you know? It was yeah. entertaining enough. Goofy ass character designs. Oh, I remember that. Like, there, there was like the flying look... guy with like the nose of that is miles long. Oh no, character designs that would put like Boba Bo or uh, what was it? or Yu Gi Oh to shame just <laughs> with how ridiculous they were. Yeah. But uh, I mean, again, entertaining enough. But I wonder if they weren't worried about possible like kids misremembering the characters from one show as characters from another because of the same word. Or if they were thinking, like, maybe there's potential copyright issues, even though, but imagine, like, Funimation had to do both. Although, there were other companies doing dubs of G Dragon Ball at the time. So, I wonder if maybe that's why it, it being a literal mistranslation just never sat well with me. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, like, it, I don't know. It's like an entire room of people said, like, hey, how about we translate it to this word? And everybody just basically said, Who's this guy? I think that's the, uh, the CEO's son. Oh, great idea. Great idea. Fantastic idea. Shut up. Great, great idea, Jimmy. I, I love it. Android 18. Definitely <laughs> Android 18. Definitely. Oh, it did, it did start with Dragon Ball when they had, like, the actual Android 8. So, I don't know. It, it's weird. Yeah. I don't know if anyone but me remembers Android 8. I remember Are Android you... 8. Oh, my God. Hang on. I gotta Google that. He was like the Frankenstein looking android that Goku met and befriended. Android 8 in Dragon Ball. Goku called him Aider. I have faint memory of this guy. He didn't he wasn't around for very long. But like he was a friend of Goku's and like he featured prominently in one of the Dragon Ball movies. Uh I was always really sad that he never came up in Z, especially because of how much stuff they did with the Red Ribbon Army and with uh well, with androids. You yeah. think that would have come up at some point. Like, oh yeah, I remember the androids. Good friends, good friends. Or then they could have separated them by, you know, calling that guy an android and then these guys cyborgs. Well, that's the weird thing is because 16 is an android. Yeah. So, I don't know. 
like, rest in peace, Toriyama did right by the seam of his pants a lot. <laughs> it's distinctly possible he was just like, you call him whatever. <laughs> I don't care. He could have written in 17 and... Maybe they were even originally written as androids. I don't know. Maybe he originally called them in androids and like later decided, I want them to be humanized, though, so let's make them cyborgs. He's like, look, we're going to have one of them uh, sleep with the girl, so we're going to have to actually make them, uh, you know, flesh and blood. Look, I, I designed 18, and I decided that I'm in love with her, and I want her to stay forever. So uh, Krillin's not married yet, and Krillin's a good guy. Krillin deserves something nice. So we're going to take this entire arc away from this action-oriented show uh, and dedicate it to Krillin being willing to throw away the world on the premise of saving a girl that he loves. Which I love, actually. Great move. Like, not sarcastic. Absolutely A+. Plus he break. comes ac what... across as sarcastic. I always come across as sarcastic. But no, that that's that's how you write a story. It 99.99% of the time, if you're writing a character and they're in a, uh, like fate of the world situation they will always 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 choose friends family loved ones etc over the fate of the world because what's the point of the world without those characters in it yeah and also the world's never going to end in in a story like that's where the story takes place like come on but it does ramp up the stakes a little bit yeah absolutely Although I guess Dragon Ball is a bad example of that, and a lot of worlds do end in Dragon Ball. <laughs> Looking at you, Namek. Yeah, but you know, there's the fake Namek and the new Namek, and then there's the alternative universe Namek. You know, I know a lot of people give the fake Namek arc like a bunch of crap because it was filler. I liked it. I really liked it. It was fun. It was campy. It reminded me of the original Dragon Ball. I enjoyed it a lot. I just find it, just, it funny how uh, Team Four Star made that uh, like shorter joke version of it. Oh yeah, and they use like the Aqua Teen Hunger Force characters uh, mm -hmm. or their voices. Mm -hmm. I don't think you ever saw Aqua Teen Hunger Force, did you? I don't think so. It was weird. It was it, it's one hundred percent not up your alley. I'll tell you that straight up. That's entirely fair. Um, it's most of it's not even up my alley, but I, I enjoyed some of it for the crude teenage humor I had at the time. What, you? Crude teenager? What? You're mocking me. As far as I'm concerned, you have always been mentally an 80-year-old man. With crude teenager humor. Isn't that just an 80-year-old man? Kind of. Actually, now that you mention it, yeah. <laughs> so we're talking Dragon Ball today, because uh, bad things happened last week. Yeah... To say the least, uh, that my husband was a little bummed. He was emotional. I, I had to make him homemade sub so he could feel better. I experienced sadness. I don't like this emotion. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks! Rooster Teeth got shut down, I might not see Ruby end. And I won't get to go to RTX, and Death Battle's gotta find a home. And then Kira Toriyama died, except he technically died first, and no one told anyone, which is actually a really amazing move. I'm glad his family got time to grieve. Um, and I mean, like, Ruby might get a home. There's a lot of talks about a lot of, like, the the guy who's the showrunner, Carrie uh, Kershaw, I can never remember his last name. Um... But Carrie and Miles are, like, super dedicated to the show, and they've always been talking to partners. I'm sure they'll find a home for it somewhere. And mm -hmm. Dylan Goo's interested in acquiring the property, which I'm all for. So, like, th there's possibility that I'll, I'll, I'll see that one continue, and it's not the end. But, I mean... It's still... Like, it is a shock. Straight up. Yeah, it, it sucked. But but more than that, Akiriyama... I mean, he died. Did I say Akiriyama? Akira Toriyama. Oh, my God. <laughs> really just he, shortened that name. Akiriyama. Uh, There's like your next he, he passed away. Uh, NPC for your book. Maybe. He he passed away. There's not really any coming back from that. Uh, ironically, there's no Dragon Balls. That's because he was Kami, you know? Yeah, he was Kami. So, right now we are uh, in mourning. Yes. Um, and for, for as much as I'm playing it up as, uh, as being lighthearted about it and everything, like, my life would not be what it is if it wasn't for him. I have a lot of really really fond memories of watching dragon ball 
like as a kid with my with my family. Like my dad and I would watch it together all the time. Yeah, I was about to say, didn't you and your dad watch it a lot? Mm -hmm. I actually have. I, I don't know why. I have a very specific memory of um, when I was a kid. I was going to physical therapy for something, and uh, my physical therapy appointments were like right at the same time as Dragon Ball was coming on, and yeah. that was unacceptable. <laughs> So we uh, we got these blank VHS tapes and we would tape it uh, so that we could watch it whenever we got back from that. And the Saiyan Saga was airing at the time, and one of them didn't record super well, and it was the episode they were fighting Nappa. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember it because of how like brutal that episode was with mm -hmm. Nappa like chopping off Tien's arm and everything. Uh, honestly, peak Dragon Ball, loved it. Um, but one of the reasons it sticks so well in my brain is it didn't record right on that specific episode. Mm -hmm. And the VHS quality was... Oh, God, showing my age by just mentioning VHSs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take I wonder how many people remember VHSs. Like, how many how many of the youngins know what a VHS is? Youngings. The younglings. <laughs> I but, don't. Uh, Probably not many. But I remember coming home to watch it, and the video quality was so scuffed like the screen was panning up and down there was static all over the place Oof. and it was just it, it was basically unwatchable but I remember still trying to watch it and it was kind of funny because in the background of all this was like some of the greatest cartoon violence I'd ever seen <laughs> Great. and it felt like it felt like it was a censor <laughs> like the VHS was trying to prevent me from the horrors of Tien losing his arm and Chaozu and Yamcha dying and I don't give a shit, show me. That's how I was, even as a kid, I'm like, this isn't this isn't scarring or traumatizing, this is the coolest thing. This yeah, is so neat. Kill him. Why why don't more characters lose lose limbs in like in, in these action shows that I'm watching? That makes sense to me. And uh that started a lifetime of uh writing stories where uh, amidst all the gratuitous violence that I would paint in these stories, people lost a lot of limbs. Uh, and, like, actual injuries would occur, and they'd have I mean, lasting do, consequences. Until why do you think limbs. Ruby lost her horn in our D&D &D yeah. campaign? Yeah, exactly. That's I'm, I'm gonna do more of that. Also, um, uh, Bone Havoc says analog media was fun. Analog media was fun. Man, you remember, like, accidentally, usually accidentally, pulling all the tape out of a VHS and then, like, <gasps> desperately trying to oh, fix it. Oh, with a pen. <laughs> sometimes with a pen, sometimes just... With fingers. Your finger. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, like, cassettes. Oh, yeah, C cassettes... Cassettes were easier to fix. Yeah. VHSs were a pain in the butt when they I happened. always remember, actually... I, I remember also the movie... It, like... Jo I want to say it was Johnny Black, where, like, the Mr. Bean's actor was playing the, uh, the main character, and it was, like, the stupidest spy film. I remember that my mom bought us the, uh, the VHS, and because I was... I, I can't say it was, because I am a messy person. My, uh... My Nothing. floors were just... What? Nothing. <laughs> my floors were just completely, like, covered in all the junk and crap that I had in my room, and one... T one day, I basically like to step off somewhere and I hear crack and I'm like, ah! And oh, it no. was, it was that VHS tape and I'm like, mom just got this for us. I, 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 and I don't think she till this day knows that it's destroyed. I just never watched it and I'm like, uh, my, I was like, oh, I hope my brother never asks to watch it. <laughs> You'll never live it down. <laughs> I will never live it down. Like, Okay, I will say this in my defense. I used to be a lot messier. Believe it or not, honey, this is the diluted version of what was. <laughs> I I know that because you were messier when I met you. And yeah. It was horrifying. It yeah. was very nearly a deal breaker, not gonna lie. <laughs> You'd be lucky I was a little desperate at the time. <laughs> you went to get a wife all the way from Finland? What? Desperate? You? I might, maybe just a tad. But yeah. I might not have been doing the greatest <laughs> at that point. Well, you know what? You have a very happy wife and a very happy life and etc. We're, we're celebrating this year our 10th anniversary. Yeah. 
Also, phone have access. We have VODs nowadays, but I have so many memories of programming the VCR to record my shows. Dude, oh my god, me too. Yeah. God, programming a VCR was such a pain. Those mm -hmm. things sucked. But, uh, you know what else, what else, like, people these days will never have to deal with? Mm -hmm. And it's... I don't know if I like or, or dislike the fact that this happened so much, but I remember... VHS stores and, and like rental places mm -hmm. and half the time you'd rent something you'd bring it home and someone had taped over it with something else Oh, I never had to deal with that but that's the worst It it kind of sucked uh, Or like you'd bring it home and the guy at the store like didn't bother to rewind it So like you'd have to sit there and rewind the whole VHS before you can enjoy the program Honestly? I somehow somehow this never happened that I'm aware of Somehow, my family never rented a VHS that turned out to be, uh, over, like, recorded over by, um, uh, what's, what's a Twitch safe way of saying this? Adult <laughs> entertainment. I was about to say, like, I can absolutely imagine that some guy would, like, uh, record over a kid's movie and just put, like, adult entertainment erotica, you could say. There was, uh, that, that happened a lot. Somehow it never really happened in my family. I know after after a certain point, a lot of those stores would have, um, like at the return counter, they would have a TV and a VHS machine set up so that before you could finish your return, you had to put the VHS in the machine and play it and prove that you didn't overwrite it. <laughs> otherwise, you're paying for it. Yeah. I, I do miss rental places, though. Like, I miss being able to rent media and, like, a lot of stuff. I don't want to own it. Or, like... I mean, I can understand that. I guess, actually, that. I, I do prefer owning most of it. Like, I, I hate that with music. I hate renting music. Oh, God. So I, That's... Why? Yeah, I, I don't I do not do Spotify or any of that. I, I hate that kind of stuff. I, if I if I have music, I want to be able to listen to that music at any point for the rest of my life. Give yeah. Give me the MP3 port before. But, like, with movies, I'll rarely watch a movie once, let alone mm -hmm. multiple times. Oh, we have gone to so many, like, discussions about, like... Yeah, you know, this movie, it was, it was good, but I don't see myself ever watching it again. Also, Bone have access, uh, they only have, apparently have ever dealt with the, uh, Be Kind, Please Rewind, but they have never heard of the, uh, over-recordings. You've never had that Bone Havoc? That's crazy. Your, but fun your uncle invented the standalone video rewinder. Really? That's cool. Really? That's so cool. You've got, uh, you've got a lot of experience with this particular topic, <laughs> man, don't you? I can't wait. Your uncle invented that, and you've never heard of someone overwriting a VHS with uh, other content. Erotica. I don't know if you can say erotica on Twitch. You, so much of free free speech is dead, man. Yeah, it is. I'm so unbelievably tired of YouTube in general. Like, I hate watching YouTube and seeing people say like uh, the word unalive or. <laughs> cancel their subscription to life or whatever like it's, it's a little silly sure ha 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 but i know that they're saying it because they can't say what the word actually means it's like really like why how are we in an age of this much communication and this much censorship 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 oh apparently bone havoc was raised very catholic so they're not too surprised for not oh. running into that i'm sorry <laughs> Maybe find out first if they are very Catholic themselves. Nah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize for my husband. I was also raised very Catholic. And um, somehow you ended up marrying me? Oh! <laughs> I said I was raised Both Catholic. Have See, me too. Have says he's also very sorry. <laughs> there. See? I knew it. Called it. Ha! Shut it. Well, I don't want to no, get cancelled. No oh my god. No one says I was raised very Catholic. Who is still very Catholic. <laughs> no one would do that. <laughs> Entirely fair. Continue. Uh, I'm sure some people will do that. Anyway, um, we're way off topic already. We're so far off topic. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I wanted you here so that I don't have to talk to myself because, like, there are moments when the chat goes just quiet as people Welcome are, you know. Welcome to the His Graphics ASMR podcast. Uh, today you're going to be listening to me drinking coffee. I spilled some shit. <laughs> That's not me. 
That is not my sound. <laughs> yeah, the, sitting in an odd angle to take that sip. That was frustrating. Oh my god, left the religion, get the guilt, <laughs> baby. Yeah, ain't that the truth. Oh my goodness, there are things I should not say, but relatable. <laughs> I myself, I actually have never been, like, part of any religion. Uh, I have never been baptized. Um, my, uh, my mom, she made it very clear to my, uh, my dad's family that, no, look, if they want to find out religion, they can do so themselves when they can make the decision, but up until then, they are not getting baptized and they are not going to church. And I just remember being very confused when I was in school and... Then I was more confused when I came to America. I'm like, wait, I thought religion was just like a choice. Whoa, 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 whoa! That kind of thing. Yeah. So I actually had kind of a similar experience. Um, my mom was very religious. Uh, I guess I shouldn't say very religious because very religious people are crazy and terrifying. And my mother is only, I mean, she she's only terrifying. She is both of those things, but <laughs> I can never show her this VOD. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she came from a, a religious household and she wanted to make sure that my sister and I were baptized and uh, raised with a religion my dad uh, I take after him a little bit more um, and he didn't really believe in the concept but what he did believe in were was uh, morals and I, I actually agree with him on this despite everything that uh, we dislike about organized religion it does tend to raise people with uh, at least a, uh, a belief in punishment system and a good set of general moral foundations. You know, the mm -hmm. Ten Commandments, regardless of whether or not I believe in the religion, are pretty good rules to live by. I'm, I'm never going to argue that. Like, yeah. do not steal, do not covet thy neighbor's possessions, do not kill, etc. Like, yeah, that's, it's a good system. So he, he kind of agreed to having us, you know, in church when we were little, so we'd learn all of those things and develop a good set of morals and I think that was a good call honestly uh, and it's one of the reasons I don't want to have kids because I think I would do the same thing but I don't want to go to church um, <laughs> that is the smallest reason why I don't want to have kids but it is on the list um, yeah uh, do you want to turn this into a podcast we can sure yeah, let's, let's just grab the VOD later and I'll just upload it to YouTube somewhere. <laughs> um, just, you know, be careful about the part with your mother. Nah. <laughs> it's it's going in there. <laughs> What's she gonna do? <laughs> this is also going in there. Right. Like we're, we're meeting her tomorrow for lunch. I'll show it to her. That is always the funniest thing to me when people are like, oh, you know, aren't you worried about your parents, uh, you know, seeing this? Like, okay, here's a little fun fact. I, I started kind of a new hobby. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I know where this is going. I I started writing books. Oh, suffer. <laughs> <laughs> I started writing books. Uh, it turns out that I am actually very talented. Uh... Now, the unfortunate part here is that whenever uh, any uh, fam like family or friend says like, Oh, I'll read it. I'm like, I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> They're like, why? Is it dirty? Yes. Yes, it is. So, I started... I have a bit of a following already where like I, I have like this little Discord group where uh, the girls are fangirling over my uh, my work. I have to say oh, fangirling... My, my I have to say... The word fangirling because otherwise Johnny will correct me. Um, what else would you call it? I don't know. <laughs> but when I started to realize that, like, oh no, this is getting out of hand, I should probably tell my mom before the internet does. <laughs> so I told my mom. <laughs> and I'm like, how do I tell this? Like, what's the best way to describe this? Because not only do I write, like, not safe for work uh, fiction, the easiest way to categorize it would be fantasy romance with a non-human male. Monster bonin. Monster romance, honey. Monster bonin. Point is, <clears throat> try and imagine having a conversation with your mother who's in Spain and you're in America. 
over the phone. I, I'm picturing your mother just staring with a thousand yard stare at, at her monitor going, America has corrupted my daughter. Oh, please. My mom was instantly just like, so you have a following? Good for you. <laughs> and I made it very clear, like, mother, you are never to read any of my material. And she's like, what? why not? And I'm like, I don't want you to know what goes on in your daughter's head. Your friend can read it and then tell you about it, but know that I warned you. I, I warned you, mother. Understand that there is no stopping her if she chooses to pick up a book. Oh, absolutely. Like, I 100% am, am prepared that at one point I will hear her say, like, so I read the book. Did you realize that you missed a comma on page 237? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, those are going to be my notes. Sorry, not sorry. I know. So I started writing the same kind of smut. YLU? Oh, you uh. read all day. See, I don't think my mom <laughs> reads monster romance. Well, if, if she did, would she tell you? She has recommended me books. Yeah, exactly. None That's of how this started. None of them have been that theme. And my oh, mom. Oh no, she's gonna recommend the tame stuff first. Actually, my mom did once, uh, like, recommend me a book that had uh, not safe for work scenes in it. And when I brought it up later, my mom goes like, "Oh, it did? I didn't even think about it. It was a good story." I'm like, "Mother, I cannot look at Scotsman the same way." <laughs> I'm just reading it for the story. The story. The <laughs> shot of the Scotsman from Sam Raimi. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, we're way off topic. We're here to talk about Dragon Ball. I don't know how we got I here. I mean, we don't have to talk about Dragon Ball, but I should probably be drawing it. I mean, yes, you should be drawing it. And, uh... Also, if we're talking about Dragon Ball, we can title this We Talk About Dragon Ball While You Draw Dragon Ball. We Talk About Stuff while I draw. Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Balls. <laughs> Actually, one of my stories is about a cleric and a, dra a dragon. Next subject, please. Okay. <laughs> First subject, please. You are just jealous because uh, you're not the one who came up with their story? Sure, we'll call it that. Sure. All right, I'm Moving okay. on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, so the works of Akira Toriyama, specifically Dragon Ball, I don't think I've, I've never played a Dragon Quest, and I've never really engaged with any of his other properties. Uh, like, I'm, I'm aware of Arale, for example, and Dr. Slump and everything. I've never read or watched any of it, though. Um, but like, Dragon Ball was foundational for me in terms of, uh, entertainment and media. And it's probably why I can't realistically watch anything that doesn't have at least some action to it. Because mm -hmm. that's what I love. And, like, give me a good story, yeah. But make sure someone's getting punched at some point during it. And make sure the person who gets punched punches back. And make sure uh, that the person who uh, gets punched in it deserves it. Eh. Okay. <laughs> I try. I mean, if, if, they're the, if they're not the ones who deserve it, then the, the puncher will deserve the punch that he gets back, you know? <laughs> like, that's just how it works. I'm surprised you like Mari, then. I mean, I enjoy a good comedy. Yeah. Um, but, uh... Yeah, like, I I love action series. Dragon Ball, Yu Yu Hakusho, that kind of stuff. 100% of my... For that, you'd think I'd like Jujutsu Kaisen more. Mm, I've that. never seen like, it. I, I've been watching some clips lately. It looks up my alley, but it also looks like one of those series where... So, there's a middle ground with action series like this that I, I need to find this balance where I, I need action, and action should have consequence. And don't be afraid to, like, knock off a character when the character's point in the story is done. Mm -hmm. Jujutsu Kaisen from what I've picked up, is one of those series that's just going to kill all of its characters off, because why not? Uh-huh. Like, almost every character that I'm aware of in that series, I'm aware of their death already. And I haven't watched a single full episode. 
I've just seen like YouTube clips and like I'm like, oh that guy's cool, he's dead. Oh that guy's cool, he's dead. Oh, they basically pulled the Game of Thrones. Kind of, yeah. And like, <clears throat> a lot of them have open story threads, and some of them, some of them have narratively interesting deaths, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Some of them, like, yeah, this character has reached the end of their line. Some, and uh, it's time to pass the torch, or you know, whatever. A lot of them are just shock value. And one of the other things I've picked up from watching the series is that, um, if you get a, a flashback of someone's like childhood or life oh. at some point, it means that they're about to die. Yeah, obviously. Like, like, points. like one of the straight up spoilers for Jujutsu Kaisen. No, I'm not gonna do that actually. But uh, th th there is a scene where like a, a character is just kind of standing there and for no apparent reason we get this long flashback about them and then they just die hmm. like like what was the point of this what was it I don't if their story is over I don't suddenly need to know what should have been told to me leading up to this Dragon Ball is different in that regard. Oh, Dragon Ball showed that you can kill a very important character over and over and over and over again. Because it had the reset button. <laughs> and <laughs> that's both good and bad. Because it, it's bad because there's no consequence past a certain point. Mm -hmm. and, and there should realistically be no fear of death. Um, Team Four Star did this very well when they adapted Dragon Ball. And when Goku sacrificed himself against Cell, <gasps> spoilers for a 30-year-old cartoon, um, <laughs> when Goku sacrificed himself against Cell, uh, Gohan has this freak out, and he screams, and he pounds the ground, and he's super sad, like, what did I do? This is my fault. And I is this genetic? Kid, yeah, that, like I said, Team Four Star did it better. Um, I remember watching watching that as a kid, I'm like, Dragon Balls. Like, you're just gonna bring him back. And Team Four Star did that. Krillin just walks up, he goes, Gohan, Dragon Balls. I'm like, thank you! Like, yeah, feel a little sad about it, but it's it's a day trip for you. Whatever. Who cares? Death means nothing in Dragon Ball. You can Ball. fly. Uh, my favorite random flashbacks in JJK are Toto and Chozo both suddenly... Yeah, what the heck is that about? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not gonna spoil any JJK. That's, that's an ongoing series, but like, <laughs> it's... It's a weird show. It's one I definitely want to give a try to, though, because, like, despite that, despite me having the problem with the, the characters getting killed off constantly, it does seem really good, and the action is, like, really well-paced, and it's rare to do that. It's... So much action these days is flash without substance, and that's... It's honestly a problem. Yeah. Um, One Piece is an ongoing series that I actually really enjoy. I, I think One Piece is great. Um, it's definitely <clears throat> too long of a series, and I'm hoping that I'll live to see it end. You uh, won't. I might not. Who knows? Um, but none of... Uh, the, the last major arc that wrapped up was Wano. Uh, the new chapter is out. I just read it, actually. Um, the last chapter that wrapped up was the Wano saga, which took, like, four freaking years! Um... And a lot of it felt like filler. Like, it didn't need to go on that long. Um, but at least, to some extent, a lot of it was important to the story in some way. Um, or at least relevant to what was going on at the time. People really praised the animation of the Wano arc in One Piece, saying uh, it's visually stunning and amazing and etc. etc. And yeah, it was. But it was also meaningless. Like, I'll, I'll forever praise classic One Piece over uh, animation over this because in in old One Piece, you would see people actually fight. You would see people hone their technique and, and do things and it'd be impressive and, and really cool to watch. Now it's basically kind of gotten Dragon Ball-ish, where they're just kind of blitzing across the battlefield and like they vanish and reappear and damage is done or whatever. And like, Gear 5 Luffy was... I mean, it was a treat because they weren't doing that, but I have other problems with it. But it's it's just meaningless. Dragon Ball, for, for as many problems as it had, still conveyed the action. And when they would do the, 
the faster than light stuff, it was still visually engaging. Uh, or, or it was sensorily. Sensorily? I don't know if that's a word. Sensory it was, load? It was, a, it was a feast for the senses. We'll put it that way. Because they would do that thing where the characters would both vanish, and then you'd see those, like, explosions light up all over the place. That boom, 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 boom. And it was fun. Because you felt like you were an actual uh, onlooker of this. There's no way you could be re realistically keeping up with this. But you could see what's happening as a result of this fight. And it was really cool in that regard. Um, but why are my headphones dying already? Are you kidding me? Uh, I really need to replace these at some point. But uh, it's, it's just one of the things I like about Dragon Ball so much is the action was, for its time one of a kind and I don't really think it's ever really been properly captured in other media. You can definitely see the influences it's had. I mean, and Yu Yu Hakusho in my opinion did a really good job with their action scenes. You so that's that's actually kind of what I'm getting at is it's been so remarkably influential on the entire rest of the industry that you can see its influence everywhere, but I don't know if anyone's ever done it the same way. And that's both good and bad because it's good because it keeps Dragon Ball to its own identity. Uh, you, you can see how it's inspired others, and Yu Yu Hakusho is a great example of that. But no one is sticking to that formula, which is, again, a good thing. Everyone's taking it and taking it in their own direction. And some of them kind of go samey in that regard, but it's whatever. Um, but Dragon Ball has a style and a feel all of its own. And that's just... It's fun. And especially early Dragon Ball, like Dragon Ball before Z and even early Z, you could really feel the the mastery of techniques and the flow and the animation and just generally how these characters are moving. Give me the the knockdown drag out brawl between Goku and uh, Master Roshi or Jackie Chun, and we'll talk about <laughs> that in a second. You uh, bastard! <laughs> uh, give me that fight any day. And keep your freaking Jiren battles with your Ultra Instinct, because I don't care about it. Um, but this is what was foundational to me. Is this is a long way of just repeating that same information? Is that was the coolest thing when I was a kid, and maybe as a result, maybe some of it's just like a little bit of a what's schnob. What I'm looking for here? Not not schnob. Snob. Um, not snob. Um, some of it's probably nostalgic. Like, I'm, I'm not going to deny that. A lot of it's nostalgia. <clears throat> um, but because it was so cool to me when I was a kid, it's still really cool to me now. I look back at it and I'm like, yeah, Goku punch Frieza in the face. <laughs> uh, actually, with uh, I'm going to throw a shout out real quick to a channel that certainly everyone who would ever watch this has already seen. Uh, and something that Hana eventually I will force you to sit down and watch more of. Oh, for the love of God, leave me alone. <laughs> How many times am I wrong about this? You have begged me to watch Team Four Star for like the entire marriage. I and finally I caved and I watched it. Now and let it go. Well, I'm talking about a different channel that I'm going to force you to sit down and watch someday. Uh, Overly Sarcastic Production does these videos called Trope Talks where they will uh, pick apart uh, different tropes, and sometimes they'll go into what they call detailed diatribes, where they'll latch onto a specific concept of a, of a series, maybe an ongoing one, maybe an ending one, and talk about its impact and how well or how poorly it was executed. The the Super Saiyan, uh, they did one called the... Uh, what was it? Uh, they did one talking about the Super <laughs> Saiyan prophecy, and it was so well handled both their, their breakdown of it and how Akira Toriyama like, seamlessly weaved in the legend of the Super Saiyan. I love that video. I'll watch it a million times and not get bored. Um, but, man, Toriyama's earlier works were so incredible. Just the, the, the way he, he worked with the characters of Dragon Ball and what he did with them and how he told that story. I love it. There's a reason it's so foundational to the industry. There's a reason why everyone is still mourning his passing. Why his name is basically never going to be forgotten. Just, what an absolute legend. Uh, thank you for coming to my TED talk about Akira Toriyama. And uh, <laughs> I, could, I could realistically talk about this kind of stuff forever. Yep. But... 
Also, he said that he was only gonna be here for a little bit and it's already been like 45 minutes. Yeah, I'm playing Power War Simulator, so. <laughs> it's not like I'm listening to anything else anyway. Now I get to listen to you and I get to run my mouth about stuff that I, ca I care about. Sick. Well, I make fun of you. Well, you make fun of me for running my mouth about things that I, I uh, care about. So maybe it's your nostalgia that just makes you so fucking picky about everything. Uh, some of it, yeah. I'm, I'm certain. Like, um, you guys would not believe how freaking picky he is about everything. So I wouldn't call it being picky. Yes, because, it is. Uh, that's mean to me. Uh-huh. But <laughs> I would say that I am definitely critical of all media that I, uh, that I consume. And that includes Dragon Ball. I have been a, a vocal critic of Dragon Ball my entire life. Um, because as much as I love it, it's it's flawed. It's deeply flawed in a lot of ways. Um, and, and as much as I've been raving about how much I loved Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, Super is not good. I, I'm really not a fan of the writing direction of Dragon Ball Super. Um, I like some of what they did, but none of it makes sense narratively. Like, a lot of it's just stupid but i mean i i really wish it, it's too late for this but i really wish that what akira Torim had been able to do is what he wanted to do with, with the series it was so clear that he wanted to retire goku a million times and just he wasn't allowed to and that's such a shame because goku plateaued forever ago and like he keeps plateauing again and it's like, okay, now let him step down and do other things. And the fans are always like, no, we need our Goku back. And I'm like, his story is done. We've got all these other characters. Let's talk about, like, God, you know what I would actually kill for? I'm really hopeful that we'll get this someday, maybe from, like, some of his co-writers or uh, some of his team. Mm -hmm. I would love a story following Goten, Trunks, and Marin. Mm. Like, Krillin's daughter, Marin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen a lot of, uh, like, fan art concepts of that, and I really like it. I think it's cute. Honestly, and, what like, I would love is mm -hmm. uh, Vegeta's daughter. I, I would love to see something Trump. with, the like, the the princess of all Saiyans. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd i like to see something with her and, uh, and Gohan's daughter, Pan. Yeah. Um, I, I think right now in the series, they're canonically, like, still toddlers, but, I mean... Goten and Trunks are now teenagers. Mm -hmm. And uh, Marin should be right around the same age. I would love to see an adventure following their their antics. Because mm -hmm. that'd be fun. And toward, toward the end of his life, that is what Toriyama was doing with the Super Manga. And I was enjoying it in a way that I hadn't enjoyed Dragon Ball in so incredibly long. Yeah, I mean, Marin could literally take over the role that Bulma had. Like, she was the... Uh, like. Not powerless, because uh, Bulma was very capable, but she was, uh, I wouldn't say ordinary either. But Bulma she, was, she was uh, on normal. our level. <laughs> yeah. I would, you know what? I would actually like to see Marin be an incredible badass in her own right. Mm -hmm. I would love it because, I mean, she is she is the child of the strongest human and Android 18. Yeah. Who dwarfs all humans and Super Saiyans even. Yeah. Um, I, I would I would genuinely love to see that. So like, if we ever get a Dragon Ball knockoff, like a, a spinoff, we've had we have knockoffs. Let's be real. Um, <laughs> if we ever get a spinoff in the future, those are the characters I really want to see. Um, it is actually very rare though, because I very often hate when I see like a show with the offspring. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at you, Boruto. Oh God, Boruto is so bad. I've, I've watched very little of it, but I keep on picking up bits and pieces. It's absolute dog shit. And uh, a anyone who's listening to this at any point, if you enjoy Boruto, I'm sorry that you have uh, such terrible taste. Also, um, if any one of you is wondering how uh, we managed to have such a good marriage when he is so critical about everything, it's because I am very critical about everything. And boy, when we agree on something, we tear it apart. And it's just, it's, it's how our marriage works. But we also, like, thrive on the stuff that we do enjoy. Like, like we both enjoy, enjoy Dragon Ball. We both love Yu Yu Hakusho. And uh, we're both Ruby fans. Ugh, I made myself sad by thinking about it again. Um, Funny thing, actually. So... <laughs> It took me a very long time to uh, watch anything in regards to uh, Dragon Ball. 
because um, so I had a friend back in uh, elementary school and she was absolutely obsessed with Dragon Ball and I just remember uh, one time I was over at her place and she had all the mangas and I opened one of the pages and I till this day I remember the scene to the dot there was uh, oh my god they were like the quadruplet assassin brothers I want to say they were four brothers or assassins. Yeah, like uh, they pretended to uh, be one assassin so that they get to like duplicating themselves. And there was a specific scene where he somehow got a uh, a wooden stick up stuck in his ass. Oh. And Goku made a joke like, "Ah, he has a tail like me now." I remember that it was Ninja Murasashi. <laughs> and so that's the page I opened it to. And oh no, that was your first exposure to Dragon Ball? That was my first exposure to Dragon Ball, and I looked at oh, the page no. and I'm like, this is the stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen. The expressions were dumb. I didn't like the way that they wrote Goku talking in Finnish. Uh, b basically, like, uh, they tried to make him sound like a kid, but just like, rather than say like, hey, he has a tail like me, he said, like, I, I don't... He tried to talk in, uh, like, kid slang in Finnish, and I hated it. Oh, like, like modern slang at the time? No. Yeah, modern slang at the time, and they kept That's on doing so this. Weird. They kept on, like, trying to constantly translate the uh, the English tr uh, translation or Japanese translation into the Finnish version. And rather than just go with, uh, like, direct translation, they would try and, like do slang if they felt like it was accurate, and I despised the slang. I absolutely despised it in mangas. I did not like it. So, so that was my first exposure to Dragon Ball, and that was my only exposure until I met my husband. And then, like, six years later, when I finally sat you down and got you to watch Dragon Ball. I did enjoy... Uh, my, my biggest problem, though, is that I insisted on always watching... Uh, subbed, you know, Japanese uh, lines and uh, subtitles. Mm -hmm. And this is something that, like, it took a while for my husband to understand that when there is sound effects and explosions going on on the background and that the character, like, talk from a distance like this, I'm like, I don't fucking hear what, what, what's the joke? Like, Johnny keeps on laughing his ass off next to me, and I'm like, I feel dumb because I this cannot understand what's being said here. So finally, he started realizing that in order for me to listen to the English dub, I need subtitles for the dub. I remember this was your problem with Full Metal Alchemist. Oh yes, big time, because uh, we're, I don't remember where we were watching it. I think it was fun animation. But yeah. the, the background sounds were amped up so freaking high that I could not for the life of me hear what the characters were saying. And l legit, Johnny went out of his way to find me anywhere where they had the accurate subtitles. And then I finally got the jokes. And, it and was then it became like one of your favorite anime because it's one of the best anime ever. Yes, but that was the biggest problem. So I first watched uh, Dragon Ball, like the very first Dragon Ball in the Japanese, and it's so weird. <laughs> and Johnny, poor Johnny, was basically just being tortured because he had to listen to it. He's like, this is the worst. I hate this. Can we switch it to dub? I, okay, so credit words do. The Japanese dub is good. I'm, I'm just not a fan of it. I, like... Everyone did a phenomenal job with it. Um, I just, I, I grew up with the English version, and I really liked the English voice actors for Dragon Ball. I thought that they did an amazing job. Um, and I really don't like, so it worked in Dragon Ball when Goku's a kid, but I really hated that they kept kid Goku's voice. Oh, yeah. For adult I, I Goku. Agree, do agree with that. Like, there, there are some people who will defend it and say, like, that, uh, uh, I can't remember her name, but uh, the voice actress did an amazing job. And yeah, she puts on the performance of a literal lifetime with adult Goku. But I still don't really like hearing, like... Kid, I'm an adult man. Goku I am at the like age that. of yeah. 27. I have a child. Yeah, give me uh, give me the Sean Shemmel uh, cover of Goku any day, personally. Um, uh, no, like, again, no, uh, no dissing to anyone who prefers mm -hmm. the dub over that, or the sub over that. Um, they're both good. I just have a preference, is all. Yeah. I do like, remember this, this, actually. This is not, this is not a Boruto situation where I'm going to say you're just objectively wrong, because Boruto is objectively dog shit. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I couldn't I couldn't write that bad in a dark room with a black vial of ink on black construction paper. I couldn't do it. It's <laughs> it's so why why so, is it on TV? It's so bad. Actually, one of the other big things though that took me forever uh, to watch Dragon Ball though was because uh, I kept on ha having the uh, anime raved to me <laughs> by dudes. So just like, no, 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 you don't realize, like, the voice actor is so freaking good, like, the voice actor for, uh, for Goku, he, like, actually did an entire screaming session where he destroyed his voice, and I'm like, that's stupid. Why would anybody ever think that's a great achievement? You destroyed your voice for the sake of screaming your lungs out? What's- Hey, hey, what? hey, he, he destroyed his voice, and he passed out. Yay. It's impressive. So- my problem basically was that <laughs> men tried to recommend anime men. to me, knowing fully well that I was equipped with an entirely different set, mindset, and thus thought it was stupid. Come on, tell no. me that there is anything in voice acting more badass than Sean Schemmel's Super Saiyan 3 transformation scream. I do not care. Lie to my face. I will absolutely. Honey, I do not find that detail impressive in the least. I want a divorce. Done. <laughs> we have it on recording. Okay, bye. He'll be back. I cook too well. You know what the worst part about sharing a house with someone like Anna is? Mm -hmm. Is that I heard her say, he'll be back. And then I had to seriously consider if I wanted to come back or not. But I'm having a good time, so I didn't decide to come back. <laughs> I will forgive you for your objectively wrong opinion. Sure, sure. Uh, again, it's not as bad as the opinion about Baruto, so, you know. I'm not gonna lie, if you, if you become a fan of Boruto, I am going to have a problem with you. <laughs> oh my god, I till this don't... day remember, like, I, I tried watching Naruto. I, I got it quite far in it, and I remember uh, when I was talking to my friends saying that, like, oh yeah, I think I stopped watching, like, around episode 80. They're like, what? But that's when the good stuff starts! I'm like, okay, hear me out. Maybe that's 70 episodes too fucking late. For real. I, you know what, I, I watched Naruto, uh, I, I wouldn't argue it was very good, but I, I enjoyed a decent chunk of it, at least. It was a very cool thing, because, like, uh, I remember I was absolutely obsessed with the idea of, like, ninjas. Like, it was so cool. Oh, I mean, who didn't love ninjas back in the... And like, I absolutely also loved the, uh, like, the freaking run, and I'm like, at this point, we all know that the run was in order to make the animation easier. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it, is, it was an iconic run that was so freaking cool. But nowadays, when I try in any way think back on that time, I'm like, oh my god. Ugh. Yeah. Like, all the girls' obsession with freaking emo boy, I don't want to remember his name right now. Sasuke. Nah, da 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 da. Itachi. Ugh. <laughs> Both of them. Man, you, you, you lady folk, you all loved those emos back in the day. I'm like, I did not. They're I... such bad characters. I guess he taught you had some death. Okay. Like, even in Stardew Valley, everybody fawns over Sebastian, the emo kid, and I'm just like, I'll take your word for it. Friggin', I'm sorry, but I, I, am... <laughs> here's how gloomy I was as a teenager. If I came to my mom saying like, uh, oh, just there's this girl, and my god, she's so freaking depressing, my mom would look at me and go like, how depressing is she if you think that? I'm like, right? Am I allowed to use that line about things? Depends. All right, I'm gonna keep on not using it. <laughs> I, I could feel my life being threatened in that depends. Oh, honey, your <laughs> life was not threatened. I could I could feel my uh, sex life being threatened. That, there that you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years, guys. 
So we're here to talk about anime, apparently. We're not just talking about <laughs> Dragon Ball. Because we can't stick to a topic to save our lives, apparently. Well, you have to jump from topic to topic. Yeah, absolutely. And also, you can't really talk about Dragon Ball without talking about... Other animes. Because Dragon Ball was very much a foundation for a lot of the animes. It's the reason anime is what it is. Uh, so, going back to Team Four Star, actually. Um, they did... Uh, Hana, have you watched the DB Sembers? I know you've watched a lot of their stuff. I... The DB Sembers, um... They would do, like, ranking lists of different Dragon Ball content. Best fighting moves, best fights, best no, arts. No, I have not seen those. They're really good. I enjoyed them. But, um, they did one that was, like, the top 12 techniques in Dragon Ball, or whatever it was. Uh, Kienzan. It, it was on the list, because, yeah, the Kienzan is so cool! And um, never and used! It, always used, never hit. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's probably why Krillin got kind of written off to the side, is because, oh no, we gave him an insta-kill, we can't use that. Um, but, uh... Right, uh, shockingly, shockingly, I say, the number one technique uh, they rated was Kamehameha. Because what else would it be? The Spirit Bomb? No, not even close. Okay. I mean, it's, it's on the list, but like... Special. If, if Honestly... You're talking about the number one technique in all of Dragon Ball. There's no choice. It's it's Kamehameha. See, I actually would want it to be Hell Zone Grenade. That can be your favorite, but that's it's not going to be I'm the wrong. number one technique. <laughs> you, you are objectively wrong. I mean, <laughs> the Kamehameha is the number one technique in the show because of it being the number one technique in the show. It's the most used. It's Goku's iconic technique. I mean, and it's Roshi's. It became Goku's iconic technique. From um, Roshi. Goku was a student. He, he he learned from others, and he took what he learned, and he adapted it. Uh, by and the way, that's literally the everyone ever. That's that's Sorry, honey, that's you. You, you. you learn from others, and then you become better, and that's how learning works. It's everyone. Um, but it was the number one technique because of how iconic it was. And they, they did this bit talking about um, its impact on the rest of the world. And it's... <laughs> Why are you drawing an angry face? I drew that a while ago. Oh, the stream is lagging for me. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Right. Um, the impact on the rest of the world. And that it, they talked about nothing that we know today would be the way that it is if it wasn't for how the Kame Kamehameha was. Like, if you think about fighting games, uh, Street Fighter is probably one of the biggest fighting games in the world. I personally kind of hate Street Fighter. It's got some great music, but I really don't like the style of the game. But that's not here or there. Um, it is a definitive fighting game. It's one of the big ones. And more importantly, its signature technique is the Hadouken. And the Hadouken looks just like the Kamehameha. It's just in ball form. And you know what? I guarantee you that attack would not look the way it does without the Kamehameha. There are a billion parodies of it. Kids used to practice doing the Kamehameha in their backyard. Was that you? Of course it was me. I was a kid in the, in the <laughs> 90s. Everyone did it. I'm not going to feel shame about it. <laughs> Literally everyone did it. <laughs> Let's see it. If No, I'm sitting down right now. I had to plug in my headphones because they're dying. But if you were an anime fan in the 90s or early 2000s and you never once tried to do a Kamehameha, either you're lying or there's something wrong with you. I didn't see Dragon Ball. Well, that's the something wrong with you. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I like that. But it's... Uh, Hi, nobody. Uh, it is the iconic anime technique. It is unparalleled in its impact on the industry. You can see it even today. You can see other characters uh, talking about it. You can see sometimes other characters will perform moves very similar to it. If you look at Hunter x Hunter, Gon's signature technique, the windup looks a lot like it. Uh, we talked about Jujutsu Kaisen a little while ago. One of the characters explicitly states that he wishes he could do a Kamehameha because he's learning about like all these techniques or whatever and uh, he has this like 
yeah, he's he's canonically a fan of Shonen Jump. Like, there's a scene where he's outright reading Shonen Jump, but he talks about how much he wishes he could use his powers to do a Kamehameha. <laughs> there are other anime. I, I don't know the name of this one. I've only seen a clip of it. There's an anime where uh, this guy is fighting someone and he talks about his hero, the greatest warrior of the universe. And he's going to make a uh, he's going to make a grand attack to honor that hero and put down this villain. And he starts charging up a literal Kamehameha. It's not a parody. He's literally doing a Kamehameha. And he gets smacked in the middle of it, because obviously you can't finish something like that. Um, but it's... For a series that aired like in the 80s and 90s, the fact that we are still seeing that kind of inspiration, it's... It does show it's you incredible. the impact of that time frame, not to mention like the effect of Star Wars that was in the 70s still around dragon ball is the star wars of anime yeah in, I'm, in terms I am of impact, okay with this there there are no two franchises more impactful to the world and to all of entertainment than star wars and dragon ball i will die on this hill show me something <laughs> more impactful <laughs> you could argue okay no two franchises more impactful than those two in their respective mediums like, there's no movie more impactful than Star Wars. There's no anime more impactful than Dragon movie Ball. Movie trilogy, I think, would be a good way to say that. I would even say just movie. Like, if, if there was one Star Wars movie it, and it, it did what it did, it would still be the most impactful, I think. Because um, you could argue that there are forms of entertainment that are more in impactful. Like, you could go back and talk about uh, Journey to the West, which is the basis and inspiration for Dragon Ball. It was kind of like the archetypical... I mean, it was anime before anime wasn't an anime. Like, it was a book. It was anime in a book. Why am I bothering with this hair when I know that his hair is all black? Because you're not going to make it pure black. You're going to make it a slightly less dark shade of black. Am so I you though? can still see these lines. You are. Okay. Because uh, that way it'll look cool. And Android 17 is all about looking cool. <laughs> yo, 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 what's up, my sister? I'm going to fall up in a cell. <laughs> Yo, what's up? <laughs> it's totally tubular in here. There's puppies and kitties and. <laughs> it's like you don't you God. know nothing about us, do you? Okay, to be fair, I just met you. <laughs> oh my God! I... This was actually one of the big things why Johnny tried to get me into watching uh, Team Four Stars content. Because it's your sense of humor. You didn't. He... He quite literally said, like, honey, 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 grabbing my cheeks, you keep quoting the show without ever watching it. You would make some jokes that were, like, a word or two off of exactly what Team Four Star would, Team Four Star's jokes. You'd never seen it, and it was the same beat. I'm like, just watch the show. There is nothing more definitively your style of humor than this show you haven't watched. I'm so glad I finally managed to get you to watch that a couple of years ago. There are days when I do think like, man, maybe I should one day meet Lanny Bator. God, that'd be cool. If he's he ever a, goes to one he's of a psychology cool. nerd just like me, apparently. And when I was watching the commentaries and he mentioned that he was like a psychology nerd, mm -hmm. like my husband was like, oh no. Yeah, I'm like, oh, oh God, this no. is going to give her so much vindication. <laughs> I am an absolute like nerd for psychology. It it is absolutely insane how much time I will think about like, okay, why is this character acting this way? What kind of traumas do you have? What kind of childhood do you have? Tell me about your father. <laughs> Show us on the doll. <coughs> Are you okay? <laughs> None hit my screen this time. <laughs> This time. There is an the actual gadget. recording from our D and D session. <laughs> I have that recording. <laughs> Where one of my, my players, screen. my Dexter. <laughs> There's an actual scene where one of my players cracks a joke and another one adds to it, and you can hear me choking on my drink on the background, and then all of a sudden I'm like, I spit all over my face. <laughs> My screen! <laughs> uh, good times. But, uh... 
Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't think it's a stretch to, in any way, say that the impact that Akira Toriyama had on entertainment is immeasurable. Mm -hmm. the, the, like I, if we're talking about just the sheer quality of Dragon Ball, as much as I am a fan of it, I wouldn't say it's the best out there. It's not the best written. It's not the best paced. It's not. It, Where's it, launch? It, it, it's definitely not the most consistent. That's for darn sure. Launch but, now. <laughs> give us launch, or we riot. Um, <laughs> the original Super Saiyan. Um, but it was definitive. It was distinctive. And it was memorable. It, it cleared the way for so many other creators to take that formula and to take what, what they loved about it and create their own things. And I'm one of them. Like, we, we were talking about uh, our strengths in writing, like, what was it, last night, this morning? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it was last night. And I talked about that one of my greatest strengths in writing is I am a damn good uh, fight scene writer, I guess. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is because I grew up watching Dragon Ball and I loved the fast paced turbo action of Dragon Ball so much that for years and by years, I mean to this day, I would constantly, I do constantly visualize fight scenes in my head. I don't <laughs> listen to music if it doesn't tell me a fight scene. <laughs> that's that's not a joke. If I if I'm listening to music, it's because I'm probably visualizing a fight to that to that song, or because we're in the car and it's your MP3 player, and I'm not changing that. <laughs> but I will sit there and wait for the next song to come on and hope that it's one I can picture someone kicking someone's ass to. I actually, uh, I th this makes me happy is that uh some and sometimes in my books I have to write an action scene, and. I, I sometimes sent them to Johnny, and if I get the thumbs up, I'm like, yay. <laughs> but I became I became good at that because that was like always what was in my mind. And when my body broke down and became crap and I couldn't draw anymore, and I converted to another medium and I chose the wrong one for this current age. Damn it, I should have gone into animation. Damn it, damn it, damn it. He's an audio um, engineer. Well... That was also one. I chose a bunch of wrong mediums. Let's be real. I was talking about books, but yeah. Radio. I chose that too. God, don't remind me of my poor life choices right now, please. I'm mourning. I'm one of them. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. I try not to consciously process that information. <laughs> what, that I'm one of your worst life decisions? Ow. <laughs> I'm telling you that I try not to think that. Anyway. Oh my goodness. Uh, because you're not. I love you. You're my best decision. Um, but because I, you know, I, I couldn't draw after a while. And other ways to to be an entertainer, I eventually picked up writing. And naturally, the first thing I wanted to do as a writer was make sure I could adapt that turbo action to the written word. And God damn it, did I ever! Uh, pick up Gulen Book One coming this year. Uh, <laughs> My God, I'm. You know what? I'm. I have no self confidence. But let me tell you, the climactic fight scene of, of book one and all the fight scenes, but like especially the climax. God, it's so cool. Yeah, let me actually tell you guys about my husband's book because damn it, I'm going to do it for him. So, Golan is a fantasy book. It focuses on four unbelievably freaking awesome characters. Uh, they are... Can I actually tell the oranges of it? Uh, like, uh, how we, we first came out with the characters? Yeah. Yeah, you, you can tell that it was, like, yeah. their, their origin was, like, in D&D. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, I basically started a D&D campaign way, way, way back. And back then, we decided to record these sessions because we were originally going to do a podcast, and everything went horribly sideways, and the podcast never happened. For many reasons. One of them is that I'm a bitch of a DM. <clears throat> so, uh, I don't recall at what point, but Johnny basically wanted to start uh, writing a book out of it. And it also meant that there was like a lot of stuff that he could fix about it. Now the campaign is finished, so he even knows how this story ends, so he can adapt like early book details into it, which I freaking love. Like, there is stuff in this first book that, like, link all the way to the end of the book, and I, like, I'm so excited for it. And these characters, like, 
there's no easy way to explain this, but these characters feel like real people. Like, my players, and I was also, uh, I had a DMPC, my players and I, they, these characters became flesh and blood, and their interactions felt natural, their, their relationships, their lines, their behaviors, everything just felt so freaking amazing. And the further the story went, the further this campaign went, the more these characters got fleshed out. So Johnny basically had, like, the early recordings, but the knowledge of the characters then and he started writing the book, and I have read the first, the, um, I have, I've been one of the beta readers. It is you amazing. You were the last draft of it. Yes. Yeah. And I absolutely adore the way that he has written these characters. He has managed to, like, put in details that are, to me, very important. Like, to me, character interactions, character uh, relationships, and especially chemistry is unbelievably important. I will despise any sort of romance book that anybody gives me where I cannot see the chemistry between these characters. And if you bring me a romance book and say like, oh, well, these two characters, they hook up because they think they're hot. And I'm like, get out. <laughs> but now, I do want to stress, um, and, and you asked about it for, for this reason. I appreciate you taking that consideration. Mm -hmm. um, we, we mentioned that the origins of these characters and the the rough of their story was from a D and D game. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling a D and D game. No, absolutely story. not. That is something That's... that Johnny made very clear: is that uh, he does not want to stretch in any way that this book is a uh, D and D story. It is a uh, high fantasy. I, I would say Western fantasy, probably. Western fantasy. Um, okay. But um, yeah, I I I don't really like talking about the origins of D and D that much because I feel like it paints the wrong picture yeah. of, of the story. The best because, way I... I mean, th there's a lot of fun to be had there, but that's mm -hmm. not what I'm doing. I'm, yeah. I'm taking the characters and the core concept of the, the original story we laid down. And then we and improve I'm, upon it. I'm, I'm doing something different with them. Yeah. Like, some of the story beats are still going to be there, and a lot of it's going to be wildly different. <laughs> and then I give him shit if he deletes something that I love. <laughs> I, yeah, I've, I've had to suffer for a few days. But, Shut uh... Hush, Daddy, I'm focusing. I put it back in! <laughs> I put it back in. I love the joke too. It just didn't work with the original. But yeah, script like the I, I the big thing is it. that the uh, the book it it is uh, its origins may lie in D and D, but the book itself is not that. And more than that, it's it's basically like just a little bits of hints for D and D players where they can be like, oh, okay, I think I know what that originally would have been, or not. There's a lot of changes that I really like. Uh, I don't know if any of that's really going to be in there, but. We'll see. Well, there's Smite Evil. Uh, yeah, Smite Evil is there. Exactly. I mean, we, we have a paladin. Yeah, a gnome paladin. Riding a corgi. A dire corgi named Elizabeth Wont Cuddlesworth the Third, and that's that's and actually one of the main reasons why you should uh, pick up this book. It's because we have a dire corgi named Elizabeth Wont Cuddlesworth the <laughs> Third. Anyway, all this to say, um, I didn't mean to toot my horn that long, but I, I do will. Love it. I will do it. This is my stream. My stream, my rules. My hubby's the best. He writes a book. It's the greatest book ever. I accept this praise, but <laughs> all this to say, uh, none of this would have happened. I, I wouldn't have done any of this. I probably wouldn't know anyone that I know. I, I wouldn't be interested in telling stories like this if it wasn't for Akira Toriyama. Like, it just... It wouldn't have happened. Maybe some other creator would have come along. Maybe someone would have inspired the world the way he did. Probably not as, probably not when he did, but maybe something like that would have eventually happened. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but he had such a cascading effect on all of entertainment that I'm now a fantasy author. <laughs> how, how you connect those two dots is a lengthy conversation that we just had. But, <laughs> but it's, it's such a, a crazy string of things to, to link into one another um, and I'm forever grateful for him uh, to him for it and, uh, I mean just the world is it'll never be the same now that Kira Toriyama is not in it you know um, maybe his influence has already kind of ended like maybe nothing he was going to do with the remainder of his days would have really fundamentally changed the industry as we know it anymore but it doesn't matter like he could have done nothing for the next 
30 years if he wanted to. It wouldn't matter because he'd already had the impact that he did. But he was still creating, like, despite that. Uh, maybe because of it, even. Like, he he did this, and he always stayed humble about it, too, which is, like, the most amazing thing. I, I don't know if he even knew how big and widespread he was. Like, here's, here's something that um, probably a lot of people do know, but I, mean, I don't know if you might know this, Hana. You know where Dragon Ball is, like, exceptionally big? Gyms. Gyms? Oh, gyms! Yeah. I was like, yeah. I don't know any gyms. Uh, Dragon Ball is so big in, like, the gym rat scene. Because Goku is such an inspirational character in terms of self-improvement. And I've seen so much fan art come out over the last week. And I've, I've seen this before. Uh, like, I've seen it all my life, but especially in the last week, because people are, are currently in mourning, I've seen so much come out of, like, people owing their uh, their fitness journeys to Akira Toriyama and to Goku. And it was, like, a lot of art of, like, Goku standing next to someone who's working out and encouraging them to keep going and be the best version of themselves they could be. Because that's really what Goku was all about. And I love that. I love that we have an anime... Uh, and a manga and like a whole industry basically dedicated to Dragon Ball itself but that all exists and it it breached the effectively like the, the nerdy part of the jock scene <laughs> like could you imagine like, like could you imagine 20 years ago uh, back when we were kids like seeing a jock talk about anime I don't Just, think so no like I got beat up for that kind of stuff. <laughs> Yay! Childhood trauma! Anyway! Johnny it talks about his uh, school times way too casually. It's, I'm, I just don't let trauma define me, you know? Aw, um, Bone Havoc says this has been a great conversation listening while prepping dinner. I'm glad to oh, hear that. You, In fact, glad, I would actually like you. to ask if you would, would you ever like my husband to join us again and have this tech talk? I would do a different subject. I mean, yes. I, you know what? No, let's do an entire season of podcasts, and every single episode is just me talking about Dragon Ball. Do you want to stay married? Yes. <laughs> just the silence. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I guess I'll, I'll keep on coming back, and we'll uh, we'll do more. Stuff like this. Yeah, yeah we can not? just we'll talk about different topics, like for example, my husband's book. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a podcast. It'll be fun. Eventually, like imagine, like I could actually technically do a fan art stream where I design your book characters. Ooh, I'm done with that. No, like th this is an actual plan of his. He is absolutely going to have me turn his book into a comic. And yep. I have already worked on a concept art for the main cast. Yep. We have like gone through details and improvements of like how what do we want to add to these characters? How do we want to change them? The funniest shit ever is that my best big buff blue boy Ikov, <clears throat> his design changed the least. He was perfect from the beginning. <laughs> he's he's just perfect. And I love him. Uh -huh. But once again, that all is the result of uh, Toriyama. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if I can really say anything else about Toriyama at the moment, though. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm already repeating myself and going in circles. We can talk about Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, oh God, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm still so happy that you. So we had like this neighborhood yard sale a while back, and um, most of it was just boring stuff. I wasn't really interested in it, but. Uh, Hana here, she sets up a, not a yard sale table, she sets up her convention booth. <laughs> like, where she sells art at, at uh, local conventions. She set that up on our front porch. And we made a couple of sales, but I mean, that's not really what people are at yard sales for. But during this, she goes out at one point, and she visits one of the neighbors, and she comes back with the entire box set on DVD of Yu Yu Hakusho. For five bucks. No, wait, four one... bucks. Which is one of my favorite anime of all time. Kubabara! Love him. Kubabara is so cool. Um, Hiei was definitely my favorite. But oh, man, I absolutely I, I love Hiei. Realistically, the only one I didn't really like that much was uh, 
Kurama. Yeah, same. Like, Kurama was just kind of boring to me. See, see the funny thing is that Kurama should have been something that I would fawn over, because, like, he was basically, like, every female's like, oh! But to me, I don't like men with long hair, so I'm like, I don't know, like, he's too skinny, he's too flowy hair, he looks too much like a woman. Yeah, he, he, was, he was very much a, a pretty boy, and I mean, he had a big scene. Oh, that. yes. Like, when, when Yu Yu Hakusho was big, like, girls loved him, and I'm sure that there's plenty of, of people who still do. Mm -hmm. But he just, he was not my character. He like, was not my type. His, his fighting style was a little boring to me. Uh, he had some cool scenes. He he was a well-written character, but just my, my I, I'm not going to say that I didn't like uh, Kurama because I did. Yeah, absolutely. But he was just the one that I liked the least of the main. Yeah, four. like I myself, uh, I I love my Yangi boys. So Hiei was like right up there. I I loved him that he was like this itty bitty thing, and unlike Vegeta, he didn't have a complex. Not at least <laughs> the same way. I I but I love both of my short boys. Um, I absolutely love Guabara. I am, like, I am very attached to personality. Like, I don't want to go into the big details, but short and sweet, I'm a demisexual. To me, emotions are everything. And Guabara was this absolute sweetheart of a man. Like, if I had to pick a husband out of that cast, I would pick Guabara every day. He was an absolute sweetheart. And then, of course, uh, oh my freaking god, the main character helped me. Yusuke, you're Thank a you, <laughs> Yusuke. Yusuke was an amazing character. He was very, like, he was very fun. Uh, he, he's having a bit of a temper problem. I related to that. He said bastard, and as a kid, I didn't get to hear that word very often, except from my dad. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bad, actually. Wait, no. I was not a bastard. My dad did not disown me. My dad just swore a lot. <laughs> yes. Like, oh my god, the amount of cursing in his family. But either case... Either case, like, all of these characters, uh, they were written up absolutely amazing. But no, uh, Kurama was not for me. Yeah, but, uh, oh man, just, what a gr It was, um, I I'd say it peaked in the Dark Tournament. Uh, I, I enjoyed what came after, but as far as storytelling goes, and, and even the fights themselves, the Dark Tournament was definitely the best of that series. I think if it ended there it might actually be my favorite anime of all time because like it that was just so good um but especially because during that time you didn't really feel like any of the characters were left behind one really big problem that so many anime suffer from um is power creep and how it leaves so many characters behind as as the story goes chi chi balma literally everyone who's not a saiyan in dragon ball yeah uh, arguably, you could say Piccolo came back as of Super, but whatever. Um, but Yu Yu Hakusho didn't do that. Like, all the way throughout the entirety of the Dark Tournament, you got the impression that all of our main characters were more or less on the same level. Like, Kuwabara, because he was the comedic relief, was arguably at the lowest. But when Kuwabara got the chance to show off and be a badass, that's an arguable statement. Like, uh, oh gosh, what was uh, against the, the team of the ninjas? Um, Risho, the, the earth manipulator guy, the, the cheating bastard. Um, Kuwabara's fight against him is one of my favorite in all of anime because it's got this amazing setup where you know he's half dead, he's he's basically just dead on his feet, even he can barely pull himself together, but he's just there to throw himself at the enemy until the enemy goes down. And he's there to sacrifice himself for his friends. And the entire thing culminates in this incredibly dramatic moment where he is about to die. Like, he is just suicide attacking at this point. And it's poignant, and it's wonderful, it's terrifying. And you get the you get a feel for everything that Kuabar is about in this moment when he's rushing certain death, all because it means that his friends will get to, to move on. And then the entire thing is played for laughs when his, not even his girlfriend yet. Love interest. When, when his love interest shows up and he sees her and because his, his power is tied to his emotion and how he's feeling at the time, he gets such a massive boost that this guy who was beating the crap out of him, he just immediately one shots 
throws him like a thousand yards. <laughs> well, a thousand feet, probably. Hurls him, I believe the quote from the dub was, unbelievably out of the ring. And everyone is just stunned because this man was just, he was dead on his feet two seconds ago. What, what's going on? And then he just gets this look in his face and he's like, my girlfriend's here. And he runs off to the side. And he's all happy and he's talking to her and he's putting on this dumb show for her because he's like, don't I look all muscly? And he's posing and having a good time. <laughs> and the fight's not over yet. Like the villain's not totally defeated yet. And he gets up, he's just mad and confused about everything. What's happening? I don't understand. <laughs> And he rushes Kuwabara, and Kuwabara still got the power of friendship boost going on. So he just beats the hell out of him immediately. Hey, you want to see me beat this guy? <laughs> he can't lose in front of his girlfriend. She'll think less of him. <laughs> exactly. But that is also why I just loved Kuwabara, is because, like, he absolutely fell he head over heels for this girl. It was love at first sight, and his feelings were true. It wasn't like, oh my god, she's hot. It was like, oh my god, she's perfect. She's perfect for me. Exactly. Without it, ever it, exchanging a word, I believe. It, no, just as soon as he saw a picture of her, he's like, oh my god, I'm in love. And throughout the entire series, he would just, he would do everything to make sure that, that she was uh, protected and safe. And he uh, didn't insist happy. that she had to be with him. He would, he was just with, like, like, no, I just, I want to make her happy. Yeah, y y Yukina was never, a so this is one thing that a lot of shows do wrong. They'll take love interests and make them prizes. That is so terrible in every circumstance, and it's why so many shows are written so poorly these days. No one should ever be a prize to anyone else. Like, earn someone's feelings, not their relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, prove that you are good enough to be with someone, and then if they accept those feelings of yours, then that's something. But <laughs> no means no. Yeah, no means no. Like, if someone's not interested in you, take the fucking hint, shut up. Like, no one owes you anything. Yeah. But but Kuwabara was never that character. He was never like, uh, I saved your life, now uh, now we're going to be together. It. She was kind of clueless about his feelings for most of it. She mm -hmm. was just this nice, sweet, friendly girl, and he was just madly in love with her, and he misinterpreted a lot of her signals as, uh, as flirting back, but he never made a single undue movement. Mm -hmm. He... He never forced himself. He never insisted on her being anything more or less than what she was. And eventually they do get together. It's very sweet. Mm -hmm. It's such a nicely... Re and there's not a lot of focus given to it because that's just what Yu Yu Hakusho is. It's it's not a show that's about the, the romance. romance. Yeah. It's it's an action series. We want to see Yusuke punch the guy. We want to see <laughs> Hiei summon the dragon of the darkness flame. We want Kurama's fight to be over with as soon as possible so we can get back to the other guy's fight. <laughs> But there is that that love interest at, uh, or that love interest angle there, and honestly, what, what I really like given to that is really yeah. well done. Yeah, honestly, what I really liked about Yu Yu Hakusho is how they handled the love interest. Like, a uh, big thing is, um, I sometimes really hate the stereotype of like, oh, the first girl you lock your eyes with, that's the one you're with. And in Yu Yu Hakusho, it was uh, Yusuke and Botan. You would have imagined like, oh those two are gonna end up together. I was very happy to see, like, oh no, they, 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 these are not it. And also, the girl that Yusuke ended up with was an ordinary girl. They didn't try to make her, like, on the same level in any way a fighter. In fact, she was an absolute sweetheart, and you could see the care. Like, you could see that these two had a deep connection with each other, and you could see the chemistry in there. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but, like, I love Bulma and Vegeta, but... <laughs> If That's just a hate fuck. If, if Team Four Star hadn't explained it, I probably would be rioting like, this makes no sense! It, it didn't. Like, in, in writing, like, their relationship makes no sense. Like, at least through, throughout all of Z. It, even between seasons, like, oh, he flies off, suddenly he's back in there, she calls him cute. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I'm confused. He killed all of your friends! <laughs> Yeah, Team Four Star did it right. That's a hate fuck. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. But point is that like I, Yu Yu Hakusho basically managed to do that, where as uh, like Dragon Ball was not very good at explaining like how did these two characters end up together, and that is one of the reasons why I absolutely adore Yu Yu Hakusho. Mm -hmm. 
I'll say this for uh, for Dragon Ball's writing for uh, romance. Mm -hmm. um, it's not good, but let's be real. It's it's the weakest point of the show. Like we, we skip all of Krillin and 18's like dating. And yeah, like you don't even know how they end up together. Yeah, it's which is why I really like what TFS is doing with dragon shorts and everything. Mm -hmm. But what I did like is how Goku got with Chi Chi actually. Mm -hmm. It was the sweetest thing. Like he, when he realizes who she is and why she's so mad at him, he doesn't like say, "Oh, uh, well, I didn't no, know I that." He 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 calmly and rationally explains, like, "Look, when I was a kid, I was really uneducated. I didn't understand what you were saying. I thought marriage was food. Uh, I'm sorry, my brain didn't know what I was saying at the time." And she's like really <laughs> crestfallen about it. Yeah. Um, because she she's this lovesick crazy girl uh who thought that she was destined to be with him but goku's immediate next sentence is it's a good thing that my heart does he realizes that he made this promise to this girl he realizes that this is something important he does like chi chi mm -hmm. and she's a genuine badass at the time like th there's nothing th there's no reason why he wouldn't do this now that he understands what he's doing and that he's someone who's true to his word so he immediately asks her to marry him now that he understands the concept. Yeah. And what so many people forget is that, um, like, so many people like to, to play the Goku's a bad dad card. No, Goku's not a bad dad. He might be a bad husband at some point, but he's not a bad dad. Um, but what so many people forget is that at the start of Z, Goku has retired from fighting. He hasn't he admits to Piccolo that he hasn't developed a technique or been serious about his training for like four years. He has just been living at home, being a family man, taking care of taking care of Gohan, hanging out with Chi Chi. And you know what the consequence of that is? Mm -hmm. He dies. And then he comes back. And because he wasn't strong enough when he came back, he was hospitalized for most of a year. And then he traveled out somewhere else because his family was in danger and then he's hospitalized for another year and then he comes back and he spends some time some downtime in the the android saga when they're getting ready for it he spends some downtime just being a family guy he not that one just being a family man <laughs> uh god just imagining peter from uh family hey, guy with goku's head Ugh. um but he spends some downtime. He spends time with his family. He's he's training. He's going out. He's training with Gohan and, and Piccolo. But it's not his sole focus during these three years. He's just training, you know? Or he's just being with his family. And that's not enough. So the world gets horribly threatened. A lot of people die. He dies. So is it really any wonder that he's as focused on training as he is every like every five months or something something horrible happens on the planet and because he's not strong enough for it either he or someone he cares about dies literally dies uh i, I feel like a lot of people just forget that he tries like he tried so many times to just be responsible for his family and it just, the world kept slapping him back into a, you need to train. You need to be the strongest you can be. And don't get me wrong, Goku enjoys that. Like, Goku enjoys everything about martial arts. It's self-improvement. It is bettering yourself for the purpose of bettering yourself and for not, no other purpose. Um, and that's what Goku's all about, which is, again, why he's such a, a big favorite at in gyms and stuff. Um, but people forget that he... He tried to give that up. He tried to give up martial arts. Or maybe not give it up, but, like, dedicate some of his time to something else. And it just, it doesn't work. Every time he tries, something terrible happens. <laughs> I feel really bad for him. Or maybe really good. I don't know, because, I mean, ultimately, that is kind of what he wants. He wants to keep fighting. But, like, he's tried to hang up the towel. He's tried to, like, at the end of the Cell Saga, he's like, look, everyone keeps coming after me. Maybe if I'm gone, you'll all be safe. So just leave me dead. I'll miss you guys, but just leave me dead. And then that doesn't work either. <laughs> the poor guy gets no break. Oh. I might do like an entire rant about just that someday. Just <laughs> like with slides and everything. Just be like, Goku tried, damn it. 
Hashtag Goku tried. He did his best. <laughs> Goku became stronger than God because the world kept making him do it. Yep. He he enjoyed that fact. He's he's very glad that he got to uh to become strong. But man, he tried to be a family man. It just didn't it wasn't in the cards. I do like um I think Team Four Star said this at one point too. I like that there's you can have this conversation. You can go, hey, remember that time Goku fought God? And you can legitimately answer that with which one? <laughs> Goku fights a lot of gods, man. I love Beerus. Ah, oh, Beerus is so cool. Beerus is, in my opinion, probably like the only real worthwhile good addition to the series after Z ended. I I'm not a fan of like any of the villains. Hit's kind of cool, I guess. But I mean, he's not really a villain and he's kind of quickly forgotten about. Jiren is the most bland piece of shit I've ever seen in my life. Um, I'm... You know what? I'll, I'll give it this. Super Broly, pretty good. I like Super Broly a lot. Um, at least in comparison to Z Broly. Z Broly was the dumbest thing I've ever read in my life. Or watched, I guess. I became the legendary Super Saiyan, this being of insurmountable strength. Because Goku cried for three hours next to me when I was a baby. And somehow, despite being a literal baby who was unable to talk or read, and because no one communicated Goku's name to him, somehow he gained trauma from the name Kakarot? N never made sense. Never made literally any sense to me. I remember going to school when the, the Broly movie was aired and so many people were talking about how cool Broly was. People were wearing Broly shirts. Broly power maximum. And I'm just like, did we watch the same movie? <laughs> like, yeah, it was kind of cool, I guess. But like, it's a really bad character. Super did a much better job with him. Probably because Toriyama was actually involved in it. And he's like, we're not doing that. We're never Fuck doing that. that. That was stupid. It's kind of like, uh, literally how George Lucas is coming back to Star Wars because people keep yep. fucking up his, uh, entire freaking legacy. Yep. Goku's wailing was so terrible, it became Broly's canon event. That's amazing. <laughs> um, gosh, I... No, wait, I have seen that. I was about to say I haven't seen Spider-Verse 2, but yes, I have. What am I talking about? It's a good movie. I mean, it wasn't as good as the first Spider-Verse, but it was good. I enjoyed it. I don't know. My problem with the fact is that, like, they left it in the middle, and I'm like, I don't like when movies do this. Yeah, it's it's clearly set up for, for its sequel, but I mean, sometimes you have to tell one story so you can tell the next one. I get that. Um, it, it At the time, it does kind of leave you with a I'm unfulfilled sensation. Like, this movie just blue balled like. me. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> no, no, I heard that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride that one. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, it was still good. It was entertaining. But yeah, I'll, I'll be happier whenever. Uh, the, presumably, it's gonna be a trilogy. I guess it could have a fourth movie after that. Who knows? Um, but I'll, I'll be happier about it whenever I see the whole thing. Like, I think long-term that works. Short-term, it's... I don't know. I mean, it obviously worked, I guess. I, I didn't like when Harry Potter did it. I don't like when they do it now. When when did Harry Potter do that? Uh, Harry Potter had to split two movies. Uh, oh, yeah. One book oh, into man, two movies. So I think it was definitely Hallows that they had to break into two movies. Probably. Oh, so right. uh, main colors are done. I see that. Looks good. I am tired, and I'm hungry. Uh, you still got 22 minutes. No. Keep going. No. Keep going, and we can get Subway. But I want Subway now. Well, too bad. You've got 22 more minutes of stream. I need to stream here. No, you're not. But Johnny. Don't let her. But Johnny. Don't let her. Uh, let's see, Bone Havoc points out that The Hobbit became three movies. My goodness. I've never been a big... So, this is weird. 
earlier on we talked about me being a fantasy writer i love fantasy stories um urban fantasy is my bread and butter i love urban fantasy the the Dresden Files are like my all-time favorite book series, but I still like regular fantasy, and I play a lot of D&D. Today is D&D night. In fact, I'm looking forward to it. Woo. Um, I'm not a Lord of the Rings guy. Like, I, I enjoyed the, the first three Lord of the Rings movies. They were entertaining, but they weren't foundational for me. Like, they were just like, okay, I enjoyed that. It had, had great production value. It was really well done. Like, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with London. London. <laughs> there's a lot fundamentally wrong with London. Uh, <laughs> I've been to London recently. I agree. Um, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with Lord of the Rings. It's, I'll never deny that it is good. I just, something about it never struck a chord with me. Like, it's just, it just is. Which is weird, because you'd think for a fantasy writer or I guess like an aspiring fantasy writer. I can call myself a real fantasy writer after I publish the first book. Gosh darn it. Um, Check it out. What? Check out the book. Soon. Uh, check out the book or I might kill myself. No! Uh, I'm kidding. <laughs> Probably. Um, <laughs> it's like that sounds after that. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I hate uh, this chair. Oh, yeah, we need new chairs. Check out the books so we can buy new chairs. <laughs> when the books come out. Um, soon. I'm, I'm getting close on that last draft. But, uh... Yeah, you, you think that for someone who is dedicating as much of his life to fantasy as I am, you'd think that I would be a fan of The Lord of the Rings, but I'm just kind of not. Never read any of the books. Uh, I watched the first three movies and never bothered with The Hobbit. But I don't know because it, Lord of the Rings is foundational to fantasy, in the same way that Akira Toriyama was to uh, anime and manga. But I don't know. It just never really struck that chord with me. Oh wow. Hmm. Uh, T Bone got invited to three ro uh, Lord of. R-O-T, yeah. Probably Lord of the Rings, probably a typo. Okay, Lord of the Rings, three times opening day, massive nerd. Went to all three showings, midnight, 3 a, uh, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. show. I know I know people who did that. And you know what? More power to you. Like I said, I, I don't think that there is anything wrong with Lord of the Rings. It's, it's good. It is good. It's very good. It's just not my cup of tea, I guess. I, I think um, I probably could get into it. Um, so I didn't become a Star Wars fan until, like, two years ago. No, wait. Thereabouts. Yeah, roughly two years ago. And that was like, like, Star Wars was everywhere. I just, oh, Return of the King. Mm. Oh, yeah, Return of the King. <laughs> R-O-T-K, you know, the Lord of the Rings. But, um, yeah, like, I, I didn't really care about Star Wars at all. It was, like, all over the place. And I remember I talked about this at a convention. And then Johnny starts raving about Captain Rex, and, and I'm like, I don't give a shit about who Captain Rex is. And now you've drawn a pinup of him. Yeah, I do love him. So, basically, what happened was that uh, I basically, I, I gave, like, a little olive branch. I'm like, I've always wanted to say The Mandalorian, but I don't have a Disney, uh, Disney Plus. And suddenly I was given loggings to <laughs> Disney Plus, so I'm like, I guess I'm watching Mandalorian. And... Right after this convention, I got horribly sick. And Johnny doesn't like binge watching. Sure don't. So I could watch a little bit of Mandalorian. And then Johnny would insist like, no, I have to go. So I would have to I watch like something my, else. I like my entertainment to You last, are free to it. be wrong about this anyway. So point is... I would then start watching the original movies, and I wanted to watch them in the uh, cr chronological order, just because I want to watch a prequel before I watch the uh, like next movie. And so many things made finally sense, <laughs> because I remember my brother watching the prequel movies on VHS, <laughs> and I was just so confused, like... 
I, I was so confused because I have a shitty memory when it comes to names. So somehow in my head, I had convinced that Anakin was Luke. And I'm like, I thought that the uh, the girl interest of Luke was his sister. Why is he doing a lot more with her? <laughs> and now that I'm watching this, I'm like, oh, oh, that makes so much more sense. Thank God. <laughs> Man, sometimes I remember things about how clueless you used to be about mass media, and who am I glad things have changed? I just, I don't really have a lot of interest for it. That's fair. I'm scared to ask what I was so clueless about. Uh, Dragon Ball? Yeah, well... Star Wars? Mm -hmm. Uh, Monty Python, The Holy Grail, took oh, you forever for to watch sake. that. Come on, that was good. You enjoyed it. No. Yes. I didn't. Did you not? So, here's the biggest problem with me and Monty Python, okay? This is before... Oh, that's right. That's right. This sorry, is before I met Johnny. This is before I met Johnny. I had uh, some friends. A lot of them were American. And uh, I remember at one point, one of these friends was raving about Monty Python to me. And they were like, no, 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 no. It's, it's an amazing movie. You should watch it. Like, here, this is the funniest scene. And it was the killer bunny scene. Like, literally, like, the bunny killing these knights. And I'm like... Okay? Like, if, if this is the funniest shit about this movie, then this is dumb. And I remember I told this years later to my husband, and his actual reaction was, What in the actual fuck? It's the lead-up to the bunny! Yeah, it's the context that makes the scene. Okay, that's right, I remember right now. You you didn't like Monty Python until I, I showed you it. Nice uh, because then you had... And it's not like one of your favorites or anything, but I remember you enjoyed the movie. Um, but you you came away from that like, oh, so it's actually entertaining if you watch the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, basically an idiot friend decided to just completely ruin the entire lead up to the joke. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Like, that's kind of like early 2000s humor. Just kind of summed up in a nutshell right there where a lot of people just like clips and you see this even today on YouTube where people will post a clip of something that was funny but they forget that it's only funny because of the context surrounding that clip mm -hmm. it's like it, it doesn't work no it doesn't and honestly that is the biggest problem is that when people like hype up the movie and then they show me a clip and like I have like this big thing where like if I feel a sense of disappointment about something I will just highlight everything bad about it because of that disappointment and that is probably the biggest reason why I don't enjoy Monty Python is because I have the original like this is the funniest fucking movie ever are you fucking kidding me this is so stupid and then when I watched it I'm like okay all right so I basically at this point I feel neutral about Monty Python Maybe I should watch it again. Just give it another chance. Give the old college try. Uh, but yeah, like, eh, I just I I can't win. Whenever people like try and recommend any kind of thing, like shows to me or movies to me, I say like, here, let me show you a. Oh my god, the Lego Movie! This happened with the Lego Movie. So. A, a a friend of mine, uh, I believe British British friend of mine, not Luke. Um, they uh, said that the Lego Movie was the greatest freaking thing ever, and they sent me a clip of the uh, the as astronaut like going on like space space spaceship, and just like building the spaceship, and I'm like. This is the funniest freaking scene ever in this entire movie. And it was the lead up to the fact that he constantly wanted to build a spaceship. Like every time he was denied. No, you can't do that. Not now. We don't need it. And finally they're like, we're going to need a spaceship. <gasps> and my friend ruined the movie for me. Yeah. It's... Comedy is... Oh god, someone mentioned Napoleon Dynamite. I despised Napoleon Dynamite. It was... Ugh, I, I I, won't talk about it because I hate it so much, but oh man. But yeah, that was everywhere back then, and I, I despised that movie. Because no one would shut up about it. Same. Ever. 
<laughs> that actually happened with me and Frozen. Like everybody, I still haven't seen Frozen because of that. Yeah, like everybody kept on constantly saying, like, the greatest movie ever, it's the greatest movie ever, it, it's nothing like a Big Hero 6, it's the greatest movie ever, you need to watch it, and then I watched it and I went, that's it. People need to I... learn not to hype. <laughs> Don't check out Johnny's book! How dare you. Hype, hype works for everyone but contrarians, we just happen to be contrarians. <laughs> <laughs> um... I loved Bigger Hero 6. We went to watch it like two times in one weekend. Oh man, that was such a good movie. I, I really enjoyed it. It's once again, it's it's not a perfect film, but no. it's it's just entertaining enough that like I don't care. There's like details in there that you can notice later that you will appreciate. Um it it's very emotional. It, it, it is just, like, I enjoyed Big Hero 6. It was really good. And it t dealt with, like, grief so freaking well. I'm eating licorice. Yum, yum, yum. Eating licorice. Should be drawing. Yum, 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 yum. Draw. Yum, 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 yum. Draw, cowboy. <laughs> I, you know what's one, one thing I always really liked? In, like, old cartoons, Looney Tunes kind of stuff. I loved when you'd have two characters who were in an obvious standoff and they'd go, draw! And instead of drawing guns on each other, they'd like run off to opposite sides of the screen and they'd both come back with a drawing easel and be like painting something. <laughs> I love that bit. I know it was overdone. I know everyone knows the punchline at this point. I love that joke. I'll never not love that joke. It's just, it's fun. It's innocent. There's nothing wrong with it. It's one of those jokes that, like, if you see it even today, it's gonna be like, <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of like every romance reader will want enemies to lovers. I mean, having been on your server, yeah, it does seem to be kind of universal, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all will not shut up about that. The chemistry. Hmm. Give me those chemicals, chemicals. Jonathan Young song, look it up, it's good. <laughs> I swear to God, whenever you recommend Johnny a song, the first thing that he will say is like, Oh, Jonathan Young made a cover of that. <laughs> it happens Man, like 90% of the time. I wish, he doesn't do that many co uh, covers. There was at one point where both me and our friend Brad sent him a song and he was like, Oh, Jonathan Young made a cover of this. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, but... It's like, yeah. if he's so great, then why don't you just marry him? Is that permission? Do I also get a permission? No. Okay, then no. I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and so are you, so you can't play this card. <laughs> Alright, I need uh, to figure out where the light's coming from. Uh, top right. Yeah, but that would cause 18 to be completely in the shadow. Top left. I think... Top, top. I think... I'm gonna make it be, like, from this direction. So that, like, this is... Because if it comes from, like, here, this entire face would be in shade. I cannot see where you're pointing for some reason. I'm drawing. Oh. And oh, also, a lag. I just realized that, like, yeah, there's stream lag. So if you say that, I'm not seeing this for like a good, like, probably a minute or something. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm now, I'm now seeing the first arrow that you drew. <laughs> I guess if we really wanted to be professional about this, we would just set up two microphones like at your workstation, I guess. Or one microphone and just use them, you know, sit next to me. I guess we could do that, but then I couldn't play Power Wash Simulator at the same time. <laughs> that keeps the mind sharp. Does it, though? Does it really? It keeps this treehouse cleaned. Gosh darn it, I'm almost done. Window frames. Don't touch my clogs at the ruler of everything on our own constant repeat in my head with the occasional break for the minute-long poke dance. See, for me, it's the Ham Taro theme song. Ham Taro, if we work together, it's much better. Both finish in English, by the way. Yep. 
freaking Hamtaro I... just like that theme song. Why? That show was on every morning whenever I was getting ready for school as a kid. I don't know why. I guess that Cartoon Network was running it a lot at that time slot. And my little sister would put it on every morning and my mom would be watching it uh, with her. And I would wake up every day and that just be, be on TV. And I couldn't complain because every afternoon I would want to watch Dragon Ball. Oh, my goodness. Oh man, I used to draw so many freaking ham taro OCs. I had, I might still. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Can you repeat that in a way that sounded a little less insane? <laughs> I you used... drew ham taro OCs. Yes, they were ham hamsters. OCs. Ham taro characters that were original. Oh my god. <laughs> This was like, oh god, I don't think it was even that. No way. I I hope it was back in elementary. <laughs> Hana, I hate drawing fan art. Also, Hana draws Dragon Ball Z androids and talks about the time that she made. I don't. Pros. I don't like drawing fan art. I have no love for it. Like even this actually is a little painful to me. And I love these characters, but I don't like. I don't know what it is. Like. If I ever am drawing fan art, I have to legit, like, absolutely fucking love this character. It's, it's why we get so such little uh, fan art out of you. It's true. It's true. And it's it's sad. I I like. I'm sorry, but the reason why uh, nobody knows me is because I rarely draw fan art. Yep. I'm not gonna deny it. Yep. And I wish I could draw fan art. Like, I, I see some people who just draw nothing but fan art, and some of their styles may be just a little shit. But they have, like, such a following because of it. I'm, I'm gonna fix this problem. Oh, fan art Friday exists for a reason. That reason is because... You're gonna you're gonna gain a following whether Fan Art Friday was created because Johnny insisted on it. And look where it brought us. Now we're drawing androids and we're having this conversation. Isn't that great? Isn't this great? Yeah, this is great. <laughs> Just so rare that I actually enjoy a character. Like I, it's not even that I would rather be drawing my character. It's just like, I have no love for this character. Johnny complains a lot and criticizes everything. I hate characters and I won't draw them. Honey? I'm just, I'm just giving you grief. You criticize about furniture. You criticize about shows. You criticize mm -hmm. about movies. In it the middle of watching Encanto, you just out of nowhere said drop dead and die, you bitch. And then continued watching the movie. <laughs> the amount That's, of criticizing I, don't I, I do. I don't remember this, but it does sound like me. You guys should have seen how he emotionally handled freaking like Iron <laughs> Giant. No, we were watching we, Iron we Giant. This. We save this for the for next week. <laughs> no. We were watching Iron Giant. We had our buddy Brad over, and him and I had both seen Iron Giant, and we knew how amazing that movie was, and Johnny had never seen it. So we watched Iron Giant, and in the most sad fucking scene in the entire damn movie, you know what this man does? You know what this man freaking does to handle his emotions? When the Iron Giant, when the Iron Giant flies up into space and explodes... And when we just see that distant explosion shining like a star in the sky. While Hana is failing to hold back tears and Brad's getting weepy. I throw up my hands and I cry out, Jesus is born! And I believe both me and Brad just goes like, are you fucking kidding me? Seriously? Brad just looked at me and he goes, you done? You get them all out? Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is how my husband handles emotions. Do you realize how lucky I am it. that I get an I love you out of him? You get many I love you. Exactly. Me. It makes no fucking sense. I feel... I feel love. Mm hmm I feel... Uh, hunger. Hunger? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's that third emotion? Horny. I get angry. I get angry. I... Horny. 
Horny is an application of love and anger. Okay. And sometimes hunger. Okay. <laughs> 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 Which is a good balance, because I, on the other hand, feel all emotions of the spectrum at all times at full power. You should feel fewer. Yeah, I should. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> With that said, we are on the last 24 seconds of our stream, so thank you so much for joining us today here at our uh, TED Talk. <laughs> if you would like to see my husband join us again, please do say so. Because um, this was an experience. Drop a like, smash that subscribe button. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put this on YouTube With later. two whole it's, viewers! It's a podcast now. Why not? Kind of start thinking. Whoa, didn't I come up with... I came up with a name for a podcast just the other day, didn't I? <laughs> oh, what was it? It was so good. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. No, Kipo. keep it going. I need to remember <laughs> the name of it. It needs to be the last thing that we say. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm going to find out. <laughs> Keep it going. <laughs> I, I usually kind of tune you out. I know you do. What did... Oh, what was the name of it? I don't remember. What? I'm going to find it. <laughs> I'm, I'm searching every Discord chat that I have. <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> what was the topic of the... I, it was... It was like a, I think it was a pun of some kind, knowing me. Oh my god, what was it? What was it? <laughs> I don't recall you talking. It was, it was right before we played D&D &D not long ago. Uh-huh. Um. Are you sure you didn't say that in a voice chat? I, I know I did say it in a voice chat, but I think I said it. Damn it. Okay, was it me, my session or Brad's session? I don't know. <laughs> it was something in something. I know it was... Oh, it's gonna kill me! We'll edit this in later. We need to go get Sam Subway. <laughs> 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 It'll be the name of the video. <laughs> Just know that when we did this, I sat here and agonized. <laughs> my fourth emotion, agony. <laughs> And then fifth emotion, physical pain. It's not an emotion, it's a sensation. New sensation. Ah, fifth emotion, smartassery. <laughs>